everyone, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I have a fun background technique to share with you featuring a fun way to add gold accents to your backgrounds to create fantastic and gorgeous results. I've got a couple of different techniques to share with you on how I created these backgrounds, so let's get started and check it out. To begin with, I've got my distress inks. These are Tim Holtz distress inks and I'll have all the colors that I've listed here on the side of the screen so you can easily pick them out and I'll also have them listed down in the video description and also on the Simon Says Stamp blog. I'm applying them onto an acrylic block and I'm now going to take a sponge brush. This is a pretty inexpensive brush that you can get at almost any craft store. I'm going to be using this brush to apply my ink onto my watercolor paper. This watercolor paper is Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. This is a watercolor paper I've used for a long time and I love it for so many different techniques and watercoloring. It's pretty much the paper that I use almost exclusively, although I do use Canson XL watercolor paper at times. You can use any watercolor paper for your coloring. Just bear in mind that some watercolor papers do give different results than others. Now I've applied some picked raspberry and spiced marmalade onto this background. However, I did not want to add the squeezed lemonade because it's such a similar color to the spiced marmalade. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. Now I'm going to be applying this color in layers. So I'm letting the orange and the pink mix together. And now I've dried it and I'm applying more pink. And this is going to help mix the two together. This is going to create a beautiful pinky coral color in between the orange and the pink colors, which I really, really love. And now I'm going to move on down to the color below the spiced marmalade. For this color, I'm using cracked pistachio. And I'm going to start applying this down onto the paper. I didn't have enough ink on my brush, so I'm just going to again smoosh a little bit more onto the block, get lots of ink on there. I'm applying this down in a way to be able to mix the colors together. I'm going in rainbow order, and I'm just letting the colors overlap. This is very much like doing ink blending with your ink blending tools with the little sponges. However, in this particular case, we're using a brush instead of the sponge. But the same concept applies where you want the color to overlap to get a good blend. So I'm going to take more of that spiced marmalade, and I'm going to go ahead and blend this into the cracked pistachio. I'm not working the colors too much together because I don't want them to become too blended. Just enough to have them be a little bit more seamless rather than having some hard edges. I can clean my block to get all that extra ink off and I'll go ahead and move on to the next color. For the next color, I'm using some Mermaid Lagoon Distress Ink. This is a gorgeous blue color and I really love how it mixes with the cracked pistachio. I'll go ahead and blend this down. I'm not using a whole lot of it because I want to have some purple down at the very bottom. So I'm going to clean off my brush. And now I'll go ahead and take some Wilted Violet. This is a beautiful purple, bright, bright color. I'll go ahead and apply this down along the very bottom and mix it in with the Mermaid Lagoon. Once I've mixed those colors together and dried them, I'm going to go back over top and go ahead and blend things together just like I did for the top portion. I'm going to blend this bottom area together. I'll just keep adding that purple and blue together and mixing those so that way they create a nice blend in between the two color combinations. I'm also going to add in the cracked pistachio and add that on top as well. And again, we're just mixing the colors together and letting them overlap so that way we get a nice seamless transition between the different colors. All right, so now that we've got our background all finished, I'm now going to go ahead and take a stencil. This is a triangle geometric stencil from Hero Arts. I'm lining up the stencil on the back side. You can tell the back side from the front because the back side is a little bit more rough uh, along the areas where it's been cut rather than on the front where it's a little bit more smooth. So it does help to know which side is which because as you're blending the color on with your ink blending tool, it will blend a little bit easier on the front side than it will on the back side just because it's got a little bit rougher texture. So I'm spritzing some water into my Fine Tech Gold Metallic Paints and I'm using this as basically an ink well for my sponge brush. I'm picking up the gold paint and I'm applying this down onto the stencil. Now the stencil is of course resisting the watercolor and it's allowing me to sponge that watercolor into the negative areas of the stencil. And I did not use a whole lot of water, I just spritzed it like once and I let that go and I just picked it up with my sponge tool. And this is allowing me to have just a tad bit moisture to get that watercolor to be a little bit more moist so that way I can blend it. However, it's not wet enough that it's going to pool up underneath the stencil as it would as if you had applied it with uh, a brush and some water. This is a great way to get some extra use out of these gold watercolors. These work perfect because they are wells that are circles and they have a raised area, whereas some watercolor pans 
have a little bit more of a recessed in area and depending on the size, you may not be able to get your sponge brush into the little wells. So this is a great way to go ahead and grab that ink and apply this down onto our background. Once I've blended that all together, you can see I'll remove the stencil and now you'll see the gorgeous gold pattern that we have on this card. The result is stunning and I love how it catches the light. It is so, so beautiful. This is a really fun way to get some more use out of those gold paints. So here I'm going to show you the other techniques that I used for the other two backgrounds. I did two different techniques on these, somewhat similar but yet different. For the first one, I'm going to go ahead and create an ombre of color between pink, orange, and yellow. This is picked raspberry and I'm going to smoosh this down onto the top portion. This is going to be the first color of our ombre. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take some spiced marmalade again. This is the same color that we used on the first card. I'll go ahead and spritz this one with water and do the same thing and allow that to blend into the picked raspberry. I'm going to smoosh that as well. And I love how these colors mix together. And you can smoosh this around all over the place to get the color to move around to the way you like. And I love having the extra texture of the darker areas and the lighter areas when you're doing this ink smooshing. It creates a really fun background. Finally, I'm going to take some squeezed lemonade and apply this down along the bottom portion. I ended up not being able to cover the very side of this panel, so I'll just go ahead and re-ink that and apply it back down onto the paper. So I let this background air dry because I wanted it to have some really nice beautiful texture from the water drying into the paper. You can see that I took a stencil and the gold watercolors and did the same exact sponging technique to create this beautiful fan background behind our sentiment. For the third card, I'm going to take some purples and pinks. This is worn lipstick and I'm going to go ahead and apply this down onto my watercolor paper. Again, I'm using Strathmore watercolor paper for all of these cards. For this one, I'm going to pounce the worn lipstick all over the background in all sorts of random areas. This is just going to create some fun texture onto the card and really allow the colors to blend together. I'll go ahead and then take some shaded lilac and do the exact same thing and I'll pounce this down around all the different areas of the card. And then for the third color, I'm going to take some wilted violet and again, do the same ink smooshing. And I'm also allowing the color to blend into each other a lot to really allow these colors to mix and create new colors. The result is beautiful. So I heat set this and I'm taking my distress sprayer and kind of spritzing some of the more intense areas to soften them out just a little bit. I didn't want them to be too harsh. I'll go ahead and dry that completely. And then for some extra texture, I took those same distress inks and I created a beautiful ink blended flower onto this background. The reason I did this is because I wanted to use the white gold ink for this flower pattern. And because of that, I needed to have some color underneath because the white gold wasn't going to show up quite as well. So I'm just using these Distress Ink colors. These are the same colors I used for the background. And I'll just go ahead and sponge this on to create a nice beautiful floral pattern. So you can see here after I remove the stencil, the great pattern that you have there. And if you didn't want to use the watercolors to add that shimmer, you could go ahead and skip that step and the pattern would look gorgeous just as it is. Now for my sentiment, I'm using the Hero Arts Luggage Tag Letters stamp set. This is a really fun stamp set that has some really great letters in it. And all of the products that I've been using so far, minus the Distress Inks, have been from Hero Arts. I'll go ahead and ink this up with some Simon Says Stamp pigment ink. This is some black pigment ink and I love how rich and intense this black is. It's a really, really juicy ink pad. I'll go ahead and stamp this down along the bottom portion of my card because I want to go ahead and heat set this. I'm going to be using black embossing powder, however I wanted to make sure that any straight areas that don't get covered with the embossing powder won't show through the colored background. So I'm using the black ink to make sure that anything that doesn't get heat embossed correctly will not be showing the color underneath. Now you can see that the gold resists the stamping. That's okay. Again, we're going to be doing some heat embossing, so that's going to get covered up. And I'm not worried about how those golds are coming through on those black letters. I'm also stamping a supporting sentiment, which is from the Simon Says Stamp Uplifting Thoughts stamp set. I've applied that black embossing powder, and now I'm going to go ahead and heat set this with my heat tool. I'll just make sure I move this around quite a bit so that way the paper does not get too warped. And then for a final finishing touch, I'm taking a border die from My Favorite Things, and I'm going to die cut this border all around the edges of this card, and this is just going to help finish it off quite a bit. So I hope you've enjoyed and got some inspiration on using some Hero Art stencils in your Distress Inks along with some gold watercolors to create some fantastic gold accents on your cards and to create some really fun backgrounds. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and head on over to the Simon Says Stamp blog where you can get more information on this card including still pictures and products used. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, as well as our blog. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.